In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club that liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. What do you mean again? These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. Cat Williams recently had quite the interview on the podcast Club Shay Shay with host Shannon Sharp. Hold on to your hats because this interview is a wild ride with lots to talk about. Cat didn't hold anything back. He spilled the beans on everyone who ever dissed him. It's not just fellow comedians. Big shots like Kevin Hart and Ludacris are also under the spotlight, accused of being part of the Illuminati. Cat spills the tea on what someone in Hollywood does after selling their soul. They pretend like it never happened. Even Chris Tucker isn't spared. Cat claims the Chris Tucker we know isn't the same. He's the Epstein Island Chris Tucker, not the Smokey we remember. But that's not all. This interview is packed with jaw-dropping revelations. And now, Kevin Hart is finally responding to Cat's claims. So what exactly did Cat say? Stay tuned because we're about to break it all down for you. But Cat Williams bought the Knicks. He definitely bought it. He bought the Knicks yeah. and uh, it's rumored that he took the Knicks back, returned them with a receipt. Cat Williams didn't mince words when it came to Ricky Smiley, exposing him as a liar and, according to Cat, a terrible actor. Williams had some major issues with Smiley, particularly with Smiley's claim that he was initially cast for a role in the Friday After Next movie. Cat Williams bluntly shut down Smiley's assertions, labeling them as outright lies. In the film, Cat Williams portrayed Money Mike, a character who crosses paths with the recently released criminal Damon, played by Terry Crews. Williams revealed that his disagreement with Smiley, who portrayed the robbing Santa Claus in the movie, arose when he advocated for his character not being used purely for comedic purposes. This man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was going to be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams was going to be fr was going to be the Santa Claus. Now let's According to Williams, the original script had Money Mike engaging in a bathroom scene, a detail Smiley apparently had no qualms about. However, Williams insisted on removing that scene believing the movie would be twice as funny without it. Williams expressed his frustration with the approach to Friday After Next, stating that they were aiming to create a classic comedy. He argued that including a scene involving an attack, regardless of the circumstances or the person it happened to, was never funny. Williams even proposed an alternative, suggesting that the movie would be doubly hilarious without incorporating violence against a black character. In essence, Cat Williams wasn't just calling out Smiley for his alleged fabrications. He was also highlighting the broader issue of using fighting for comedic effect and advocating for a different, funnier approach to filmmaking. And that's where Cat proceeded to diss Kevin Hart. Williams questioned the rapid success of Hart, highlighting the absence of memories of sold-out shows or standing ovations in Hart's early career. Williams pondered whether Hart paid his dues in the competitive stand-up comedy world, emphasizing the significance of the journey and hinting at the term plant for those who achieve instant success without the typical struggles. Williams brought attention to Hart's documentary with Chris Rock, which showcased his East Coast comedy roots, creating a perceived contradiction with Hart's narrative of starting in Los Angeles. The term plant was used to describe individuals who appear out of nowhere and claim self-made success without the traditional struggles. Kevin Hart, however, has previously addressed rumors of overnight success, emphasizing his 18 years in the business and the dues he's paid to achieve his dreams. In a 2014 interview with Oprah, Hart discussed his unwavering dedication to his dreams. Surrounded by the reminders of comedians who paved the way for him, he acknowledged the blueprint laid out by successful individuals before him and credited his drive as a key factor in setting him apart in Hollywood. Cat Williams didn't stop at questioning Hart's rapid rise. He also delved into the dynamics of Hollywood gatekeepers. Williams challenged the notion that there are no gatekeepers in the entertainment industry. Williams, with his keen observations, asserted that he has witnessed individuals controlling access to opportunities within the entertainment industry. 
A striking example he provided was Kevin Hart supposedly paving the way for Tiffany Haddish, prompting Williams to raise thought-provoking questions about the existence of gatekeepers, despite the persistent narrative that denies their influence. Because they tell you that there's no gatekeepers, but we keep seeing the same people open the gate. Didn't Kevin open the gate and let Tiffany in? Ain't he now opening it up for... Transitioning to Tiffany Haddish, celebrated for her roles in Girls Trip and a historic appearance on Saturday Night Live, her journey from living out of her car to stardom intrigued Williams. He provocatively inquired whether Haddish wrote Girls Trip or if the script was handed to her, shedding light on the challenges faced by black women in the industry and the often overlooked struggles behind their success. The controversy surrounding Haddish continued as Williams critiqued her popularity, suggesting that her authenticity played a pivotal role in her appeal. This prompted him to question when being real became a marketable quality in the industry. In doing so, Williams highlighted double standards and the industry's tendency to sideline talent based on appearances, revealing the intricate dynamics that persist within Hollywood. Williams's outspoken nature and critique of industry practices can be traced back to a 2013 interview where he discussed a peculiar industry trend, black actors being coerced into wearing dresses on screen to advance their careers. Kevin Hart, once critical of such compromises, found himself in the midst of controversy when he appeared in an SNL skit, Donning a Dress. Williams seized the opportunity to reignite the debate, suggesting that Hart's success shielded him from the criticism that others before him had faced, thereby emphasizing the clash of values within the industry. The feud between Williams and Hart escalated as Hart responded, vehemently defending his choices and accusing Williams of jeopardizing his career due to issues with substances and unprofessionalism. Hart contended that Williams had become a risk to studios resulting in a decline in his career. This public spat underscored the clash of values, with Williams advocating for staying true to one's artistic principles, while Hart emphasized the serious business of comedy and the importance of dedication. In an extensive interview on Club Shay Shay, Williams expressed his frustration with the industry's tendency to overlook his suggestions for comedy projects. He claimed that for five years, every movie Kevin Hart worked on had first landed on his desk. Williams asserted that his input aimed at steering away from perpetuating stereotypes was consistently ignored, prompting him to question the industry's commitment to diversity and innovation. Kevin told you he wouldn't go wear no dress until they offered him the dress and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. Duh. But you didn't make it before they brought it up, did you? The discussion also extended to comedic standards, with Williams emphasizing his refusal to compromise on certain content. He argued for a more thoughtful and considerate approach to comedy, advocating for the avoidance of outdated and potentially offensive tropes. This broader examination of Williams' career journey led to discussions about his Emmy win and his perspective on being mainstream in an industry that often demands conformity. However, Kevin Hart's rise to stardom isn't just a tale of pure comedic talent. It's also woven into the fabric of effective marketing and promotional strategies. To delve into this assertion, it's crucial to recognize the pivotal role that marketing and promotion play in the entertainment industry, especially in Hollywood. Talent alone doesn't always guarantee success. The ability to market and promote oneself effectively often becomes the defining factor between obscurity and stardom. This dynamic is particularly pronounced in the realm of comedy, where numerous exceptionally talented comedians vie for limited opportunities on both stage and screen. In Kevin Hart's case, it's undeniable that he benefited significantly from a well-executed marketing and promotional campaign. Hollywood not only recognized his immense comedic potential, but also made substantial investments in him as a rising star. Movie studios and television networks discerned the mass appeal of his comedic style, promptly casting him in various projects. However, it's crucial to underscore that Kevin Hart's success is not solely a result of marketing maneuvers. His comedic talent is a genuine and undeniable facet of his success. His ability to connect with audiences fundamentally drew the attention of Hollywood decision-makers. In this context, marketing and promotion served as tools 
to amplify his existing talent, extending his reach to a broader and more diverse audience. The acknowledgement of Kevin Hart's potential as a bankable star by Hollywood executives and marketing teams was grounded in his innate comedy prowess. They viewed him as a valuable asset and invested heavily in promoting his brand, including booking him for larger venues and casting him in high-profile movies and television shows. This strategic approach aimed to capitalize on Hart's existing talent while also expanding his visibility and influence in the entertainment industry. While it's undeniable that Hart's hard work and determination contributed to his success, the claims made by Cat Williams about him being a puppet raise intriguing questions. Williams suggests that Kevin might be adhering too closely to what the industry demands, potentially compromising his authenticity. It does seem somewhat unusual that Kevin rose to stardom so rapidly after aligning with industry expectations. The notion of him being a puppet implies a willingness to conform to the wishes of powerful figures in Hollywood. While it's tempting to attribute Kevin Hart's success solely to his talent and industry acumen, Cat Williams' claims prompt consideration of whether there might be more nuanced forces at play in shaping the trajectory of his career. But what do you think about this? Make sure to comment below. And while we wait for more updates, make sure to watch our other video for more wild drama.